Hey everybody, hopefully all of you are doing all right. Today we're going to be making my rendition of Los Angeles Unified School District's peanut butter bread. This recipe is decades old and was discontinued, but today I'm going to show you guys how to make it at home. Let's get into it. I'm going to be using my stand mixer for this recipe. I have four tablespoons of butter and I have about one and one fourth cup of turbinado sugar. You can also use regular sugar. I just chose to use turbinado sugar on this particular day. And we're gonna cream that with the peanut butter and that's about one and one fourth cup of peanut butter. Lots of peanut butter. That's one of the reasons why this bread is no longer made. Too many kids with EpiPens running around. So we're just gonna cream that together until it's nice and fluffy. Now I know someone is already thinking, can I use almond butter instead of peanut butter? And the answer is yes. To the mixture, I'm gonna uh, blend in two eggs, one at a time, making sure each one is blended in well before adding the next. And I'm going to add some vanilla. That's why I said this is my rendition. The original recipe does not call for vanilla at all, but I like it. So I'm gonna add my all-purpose flour, some baking powder, and a little bit of salt, and I'm just gonna sift that together. For this recipe, be sure and check the links below. It's gonna take you to gdseasoning.com. Now I'm just gonna take half of the dry mixture and add it to the mixer and I'm just gonna pulse it just until it comes together. This dough is a very thick, doughy, almost Play-Doh-like feel. So I'm just gonna pulse that until it's mixed and then I'm gonna add all of the milk and I'm gonna follow that up with the remaining dry ingredients. So yeah, after I did the recipe and the video for the LA Schools coffee cake, a lot of people in the comments asked me did I have the recipe for the peanut butter bread because this was the second favorite um, item that we would buy on the nutrition break. Uh, I did have it, but I did have to play with it a few times because of the breakdown. This recipe made a full sheet pan, that great big sheet pan. So our dough is done. I'm just going to set that aside really quick so I can spray a 9 by 13 baking dish with some baking spray on all the sides and the bottom. And then we're just going to pour that dough right into the baking dish. And you do need to spread. You can see the texture of this dough right away. As a matter of fact, this video was shot before I revised the recipe a final time. So your dough will be slightly looser, but I just wanted the best ending product. At this point, you wanna make sure you take your dough and spread it with the back of the spatula from the center to all of the corners. I want all of you guys to be sure to place a visible sign on this bread if you're gonna be serving it to a group of people. That way, people with nut allergies are fully aware and they know to stay away. We wouldn't wanna set off someone's allergies unnecessarily. And I think that's why not only LA Unified School District, but other school districts have opted to not use products that contain peanuts because you can't tell one student from the next. We're gonna bake the peanut butter bread at 350 degrees for about 20 to 25 minutes. Once the bread is done, it almost looks the same as before it went in. It doesn't dome. Remember, this is not a cake, this is bread. I let it stay in the pan for about five minutes and then I invert it and let it cool on a rack for about 30 minutes or so before I add a light icing. This bread is really just a simple peanut butter bread. I mean, you can't get any easier than the ingredients that we're using today and the fact that it's not gonna give you a stick to the roof of your mouth sort of taste, but it, you can tell this is definitely peanut butter and it's going to have that texture um, when you bite into it. I'm gonna put a light icing. Some of the schools we're finding out when we're talking to each other, some schools did put a light icing and some schools did not. I'm gonna write the recipe to show you how to use the icing or if you don't want to use icing at all, you can make the bread actually a little sweeter by using one and a half cups of sugar and ditching the icing completely. The icing on the bread is very sheer. It's not that thick, hug em style sort of icing we would put on a pound cake, all right? It's very sheer. And then you're just gonna let it dry for about five minutes or so. And then you can go ahead and cut it. Now I'm just showing you how to cut it because you might want smaller pieces than um, larger pieces. So on the right side, I cut a half of it into three columns and the left side, I cut into two columns. And so if you wanna get more servings out of this nine by 13, you can, follow the pattern I did on the left and get 12 pieces, which will give you a total of 24, or you can follow the pattern here on the left side and you can get 16 pieces out of the nine by 13. So that's up to you. This bread is really rich and moist and definitely has a heavy peanut butter flavor going on. And when I taste it now, I'm like, man, I cannot believe we ate this bread as kids, but that's what we did. Of course, our metabolisms were faster too then. 
you definitely want to serve some milk if you're going to be giving it to the kids or if you have adults in the room make some tea and coffee available all right thank you guys so much for joining me you know i appreciate it when you come cook with me and hang out don't forget this recipe and others can be found at gdseasoning.com and i'll see you guys next time